Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about chapter 9, section 4. Um, we're going to talk about several different tests for convergence, and towards the end of the video uh, we're going to talk about how you know which test to use. So last time we already talked about the integral test, and, um, and we also looked at geometric series in the lecture before that, and um, and we were able to determine convergence based on that common ratio. But, um, but yeah, so here we're going to learn some different techniques for figuring out whether or not a series converges or diverges. So the first test that we're going to talk about is called the comparison test. And basically what this is saying is suppose that your, um, your sequence, that your trying to find, um, or your formula for the series that you're trying to find is uh, between zero and another, and another sequence, b sub n, for all n beyond a certain value. Um, the idea is this. It says that if b sub n converges, then, then uh, or the sum of b sub n converges, then a sub n converges, and if the sum of a sub n con diverges, then the sum of b sub n diverges. So let's kind of um, let's kind of talk about the intuition behind why this is true. I think it makes sense intuitively. Um, the idea is this. So for example, let's say that we have we're trying to figure out what the sum of the series. Let's try that. Let's say that we're trying to figure out. So let's say we're trying to figure out the sum of um, a sub n, which in this case the formula is 1 over n squared plus 1. And we don't really have the tools yet to figure this out. But the idea here is that we know the behavior of 1 over n squared. And 1 over n squared is a larger number than 1 over n squared plus 1. Because remember, if we have the same number in the numerator, the larger our denominator, the smaller the actual value is going to be. And we can see this with the values of um, each a sub n and each b sub n. So, you know, if we compare these guys, these guys are both a sub 1 right? So if we plug 1 in for n, we end up getting 1 over 1 squared, which is 1. If we plug 1 in for n right here, we get 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 2. So we can see that, um, and actually I should have called this b sub 1. Let's call that b sub 1. We can see that for each term, when we compare b sub n and a sub n, b sub n is always going to be larger, right? You can see that, right? 1 is larger than 1 half, 1 fourth is larger than 1 fifth, 1 ninth is larger than 1 tenth, 1 sixteenth is larger than 1 seventeenth, and so forth. So hopefully you guys can see that. That's true. Um, actually, sorry, this is a sub 3 a sub 4, this is a sub 2. Okay, so you can you guys can see that um, that the b terms, that the b sub n terms are always going to be larger than the a sub n terms for any n. And what that tells us is that we can compare the series in this way, right? So what we can do is um, we can say, okay, well, in this case, a sub n is always going to be less than or equal to b sub n, as we can see here by the by comparing, you know, term by term. And so what we have here is is um, a sub n is one over n squared plus one, and it's between 
0 and b sub n, which is 1 over n squared. Now we know what the behavior of 1 over n squared. We know that this, we know from last time, that this converges. We know that from last time. So basically what this is saying is, hey, this is always going to be larger than this guy, right? So 1 over n squared is larger than 1 over n squared plus 1. And so if 1 over n squared converges and it's bigger, well, then 1 over n squared plus 1 has to also converge. It, how could it diverge? How could it diverge to infinity if it's smaller than something that converges? So that's the logic here. And we're going to do plenty of examples where uh, we can see this thing in action. Now let's look at another example down here. Let's say that we have um, a sub n is equal to 1 over n and b sub n is equal to 1 over n minus 1 half. Now, which one is going to be bigger? Well, we can, we can look at the formula, or we can just expand the series in terms of, you know, their terms, a sub 1. Um, so here, a sub 1 is 1. If we plug in 1 into the sky, we get 1. a sub 2 is 1 half. Again, we're just plugging in n equals 2 in here and so forth. Okay, so this is a sub 3 and a sub 4. And now if we look at our series on the bottom, this guy is going to be b sub 1, b sub 2, b sub 3, and b sub 4. And what do you, what do you notice? Well, you notice that a sub n or, well, maybe I should say it like this. You should notice that b sub 1 is always bigger than a sub 1. Or b sub n is always bigger than a sub n for any n. So b sub 1 is bigger than a sub 1. b sub 2 is bigger than a sub 2, etc. And so this guy, this guy is bigger for any n, right? We're only considering positive n's because this is a series that we're talking about. And... Um, and you can also think of it conceptually, like with b sub n, the denominator is always smaller than the denominator of a sub n. And when the denominator is smaller and the numerator stays constant, the bigger number is going to have, the bigger fraction is going to have the smaller denominator, right? So like, you know, for example, one half versus one fourth. This guy is bigger because the denominator is smaller. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So how can we how can we write this as an inequality? Well, we can say that um, that b sub n is going to be greater than or equal to a sub n, which is one over n, and a sub n is greater than or equal to zero. So what does this mean? Well, what we know for sure from last time, so we know from last lecture that 1 over n diverges. We know that. That's a fact that you can use here. And if that's the case, this is saying, hey, this thing is going to be smaller than this all the time. So if this guy diverges, if 1 over n diverges, then that forces this to diverge. This has to diverge because the sum is always greater than the sum of 1 over n, right? So that thing is bigger than or equal to 1 over n, as we can see. 
And so it's saying, okay, well, since the smaller thing goes off to infinity, then the larger one also has to go off to infinity. How could it? How could it? How could it converge? Um, if it's bigger than, if it's bigger than something that adds up to infinity. So that's the idea here. That's how we can um, compare two different series and talk about their convergence or divergence. So let's do some more examples with this. It says, use the comparison test to determine whether the series one over n to the three plus one converges. And the idea here is that we're going to compare to, you know, the, the basic idea is we take the highest power on top and the highest power on bottom, and that's what we compare it to, um, you know, a P series, basically. We talked about that a little bit last time where we have, so we want to compare, actually, I'm going to write this off to the side over here. So want to see if we can compare to a P series. So that's a series of the form one over n to the P. And we know from last time, we showed this with the integral test, we said that um, if P if P was bigger than one, then this thing converges, right? So if we have one over N squared, for example, it converges, or one over N cubed converges. But what if we had P is less than or equal to one, we saw that that P series diverged. So like one over N to the one is that harmonic series that we talked about that diverges. So that's what we want to do. That's the idea here. So we want to take the highest power in the numerator, which we just have one, <coughs> the highest power term in the denominator, which is n to the third, and that's what we want to compare to. So, so let's, let's compare 1 over <coughs> n to the 3 plus 1 to 1 over n to the 3. Now, which one is bigger? Which one is bigger? Well, the bigger one is going to have the smaller denominator, right? The smaller one is going to have uh, the bigger denominator. Sorry, I don't know if I said that backwards. Let's, let's, re let's regroup that. So the smaller number has the larger denominator. So this guy right here is the smaller one. <clears throat> okay, so, so we know, so what do we know? What do we know? We know that this guy converges, and we know that because it's a P series. It's of the form 1 over n to the P, where P is equal to 3, and if P is greater than one, it converges. So we know this, okay? And so let's write this in words. So we know that the first thing we figured out was that this thing is smaller. We know that this is smaller than this. We know that, right? That's, that's true because this thing has a bigger denominator. We're, we're taking one and we're adding it to n to the three. So since this thing has a bigger denominator, it's smaller. So since that's the case, we can deduce the following.
okay? So here's the idea. The infinite series summing up uh, 1 over n to the 3 from n equals 1 to n equals infinity is going to be larger than this series because we talked about the denominator comparisons. And we know that 1 over n to the 3, the sum, converges. And since that thing is bigger than this, well, then that thing has to converge as well. How could it go off to infinity if something that's bigger than it is converging onto a finite number? That's the idea here. That's the intuition. So that's the idea. So thus, and we can do the little three dots for thus, thus the sum, and I'm being lazy without writing the bounds, but thus this guy converges by the comparison test. Thus, that converges by the comparison test. So that's what we were trying to figure out. And we compared the original series, uh, 1 over n to the 3 plus 1, to the series that we know converges, 1 over n to the 3, the sum of that. So. Okay, excellent. Let's do another example. So we want to decide whether this series converges or diverges by using a comparison test. And what I can do here is I can, so what are we trying to compare? Well, we want to compare the series that we're given because it's not obvious at first glance whether this converges or diverges, at least it's not really for me, um, but we want to compare this series to one that we know. And again, the strategy for doing this is we want to compare to the P series, which has the highest power term in the denominator, uh, the numerator over the highest power term in the denominator. In the first case, in the first example, the only thing we had on top was one. So we had 1 over n to the 3. This time, our, our highest power in the numerator is n, and our highest power in the denominator is n to the 3, okay? And what this reduces to is a nice p-series that we're familiar with, 1 over n squared, right? So here's the idea. Um, 1 over n squared... We can actually, we can actually go ahead and um, and set up our our problem now. So you want to ask yourself: Is this thing the bigger one, or is this thing the bigger one? Think about that. Which one's good? Which one has to be the bigger one? And if you want to list out terms, you can by doing you know n equals one compared to n equals 2, and so forth. Um, the bigger one here is going to be this guy. And maybe to see that, you know, we're first of all, we have two components. We have a numerator and a denominator to consider because the numerator isn't the same here, from here to here. Now, the numerator in this guy, we're taking away 1 from the numerator, which is going to result in a smaller number. It's, you know, we take 1 away from the numerator and we add 1 to the denominator. So when the denominator gets bigger, the fraction gets smaller. And if we take away a number from the numerator, the fraction is also getting smaller. So, and again, you know, if, if that, if what I just said didn't make sense, you can always list the terms to see which one's bigger. So which one is larger? We can list out some terms. So like for n minus 1 over n to the 3 plus 1, um, what we have, we have a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and we can list the terms out. So when I plug in 1 for n, I get 1 minus 1, which is 0 over 2. So that's just 0. 
Okay, a sub 2, we plug in 2 for n, so we get 2 minus 1 over 2 to the 3 plus 1, and that's going to give us uh, 1 over 9. Okay, a sub 3, we plug in 3 for n, 3 minus 1 is 2, over 27 plus 1 is 28, and that just reduces to 1 over 14. Okay, now we look at the other one. So the other one was n to the 3, or n over n to the 3, which was 1 over n squared. And I'm not saying that this is, uh, let's just look at this. So just to sh show you guys, um, when we plug in 1 here for n, we get 1 over 1, which is 1. When we plug in 2, we get 2 over 8, which is a fourth. When we plug in 3, we get uh, 3 over 27, which is a ninth. So that's what we can see here. We can see the B terms are always bigger than the A terms for every N. And so that's why this guy is bigger. I just wanted to make that completely crystal clear there. So that's bigger, all right? Now, we know the behavior of this thing. We know that we know that it converges because when we reduce it, it equals this. This is bigger and it converges, right? Because, again, we have a p series, 1 over n to the p, where p is 2. 2 is bigger than or equal to 1, therefore this thing converges. And what we can say at this point is we can say that, I like to write it out in words. Let me tilt my microphone over here. So what we can say is since the sum of 1 over n squared is larger than the sum we were considering to begin with. Since that's the case, and since 1 over n squared, the sum converges, Well, it follows that since this guy is bigger than this guy and it converges to some finite number, then this guy must converge to some finite number, right? It couldn't possibly diverge off to infinity since something that's bigger than it converges, okay? So, um, right, so n minus 1 over n to the 3 plus 1. Since that guy converges, then this guy converges 2. So that is our answer here. This original series converges by the comparison test. All right, let's do some more comparing here. So the first thing you want to do is what can I compare this to? Like that's what you want to do. Um, and so remember, we just take the highest power term on top and bottom. So we want to compare the original sum that we're given to 6n squared over 2n to the 3, which reduces down to 3 over, well, 3 times 1 over n, which is just 3 over n, okay? Now, which one is bigger? This guy or this guy? Well, what I'm noticing is that the denominator is getting smaller, which means that the denominator um, is smaller than that guy, but the numerator is getting bigger at the same time. So this thing, this guy, is bigger. Now again, if this isn't immediately obvious to you, 
you should write out the terms just like we did with this one, right? Try to see, you know, when n equals 1, what is the sum equal to here? And what is it equal to here when n equals 2? You know, you can compare that way if it's not immediately obvious to you. But the, the thing is, is that the numerator is getting bigger and at the same time, the denominator is getting smaller compared to the series on the right. And since that's true, this thing has to be bigger. Okay. So since that's the case, um, also, does this look familiar to you, this, this uh, series? It should. It's the harmonic series multiplied by 3. Now, we know that the harmonic series diverges, right? This is a P series with P equal to 1. So what does that tell us? So we know this guy diverges. So what can we say here? Well, this thing is bigger than something that diverges, right? So what does that mean? Well, this thing goes off to infinity. That's the sum. So if that sum is going off to infinity and it's smaller than something, well, that smaller thing also has to go off to infinity, right? Um, or maybe, sorry, sorry, I said that backwards. This guy, this guy is bigger than this guy, right? And if this is the smaller thing that goes to infinity, well, then the bigger thing has to go to infinity as well, all right? So let's write this in words. Since, since the comparison series that we were looking at, and remember, this guy was the thing that we compared, but it, it's the same thing as 3 over n when we reduce. So since the sum of 3 over n is smaller than the original sum we were considering, And since the sum of 3 over n diverges, well, I don't know that I need to write well, <laughs> then that original sum we were considering must also diverge. Okay, so that original series can, um, diverges. All right, let's do another example. So we want to use the comparison test again to see whether this thing converges or diverges. So the highest power term in the bottom is n to the fourth. And so what we want to compare this to is... Well, the numerator is just 1, right? That's the highest power term. And the denominator is n to the fourth. We know this is a p-series that converges. So the question is, what is that going to tell us about the convergence of this guy? Well, we need to figure out which one's bigger. So which is larger? 1 over n to the 4 plus e to the n, or sum of 1 over n to the 4. Which one's larger? Well, to see which one's larger, you want to see which one has the smaller denominator. And this guy, this guy has the bigger denominator because n is always going to be positive. So essentially, we're just adding on something positive to n to the 4, where here we simply have n to the 4. And so this guy has to be bigger. Again, you can list out your, um, your a sub n's and your b sub n's to compare that way. But you can just notice, hey, the denominator here is always going to be bigger than the denominator here. And therefore, the whole thing has to be smaller, right? Like the whole number. So 
we know that this thing converges, right? So is larger than 1 over n to the 4 plus e to the n and 1 over n to the 4 converges so it's since that thing is larger than this guy and it converges this thing has to converge to how could it diverge to infinity how could the sum be infinity if it's um if it's smaller than something that converges. And that's our answer here, this thing converges. All right. Okay, the next test we're gonna talk about is called the limit comparison test. And I'm not going to, you know, do any kind of proof or talk really in depth about um, why this thing works, but you should really think about it. Um, you should reflect on, like, why this, this test is even valid. Um, but here's the test. So if your, if your terms in your series are strictly bigger than zero for all terms, then we can use this other comparison test where we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence a sub n over the sequence b sub n, if we get a limit c, where c is positive, then the two series either both converge or both diverge. So if we're comparing two series and we know for sure that one of them diverges, then from this test we can say, okay, well, the other one diverges as well. So let's do some examples with this. So it says use the limit comparison test to determine whether or not the sum of this um, expression converges or diverges. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same little trick that we used before with the regular comparison test. We're going to take the highest power term in the numerator then the highest power term in the denominator and we're going to compare the original series to that series. So we want to compare our original series, n squared minus 5 over n to the 3 plus n plus 2, to n squared over n to the 3, which is going to reduce down to 1 over n. Okay. Now, if we take the limit of 1 over n over this guy and, and we actually get a number for the limit, then both of these things are going to diverge because we know for sure this diverges. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, a sub n is going to be n squared minus 5 two and and again it doesn't it actually doesn't matter what you pick as a sub n and b sub n okay so these are the the two that we're going to compare and so the the limit test tells me well let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n was it a sub n on top yeah doesn't matter but anyway a sub n divided by b sub n, which is 1 over n. Now let's clean it up. So we have limit as n goes to infinity of n squared minus 5 over n to the 3 plus n plus 2. And we're dividing by 1 over n, which means we're multiplying by n over 1. And so we have to multiply n times this guy, so we have to distribute. So let's do that, clean it up. So we have limit as n goes to infinity, n times n to the second power is n cubed, minus 5n, all divided by n to the 3 plus n plus 2. 
Okay, so let's take the limit of this and we're going to use our little trick where when we have limits going to infinity, we can divide top and bottom by the highest power term to clean it up. So what this is going to give us is limit as n goes to infinity of n to the 3 over n to the 3, that's the highest power term, minus 5n over n to the 3 over n to the 3 over n to the 3 plus n over n to the 3 plus 2 over n to the 3. All right, so let's clean it up again. So this, again, I just did that. That's our little trick from Calc 1, if you guys remember doing infinite limits. We had this trick, and then we had L'Hopital's rule we could use, too. Um, all right, this goes to 1. This goes to 5 over n squared. On the bottom, this goes to 1. This goes to 1 over n squared. And then this is just 2 over n to the 3, OK? Now, once we plug in infinity here, um, what we end up getting is something nice. So we get 1 minus 5 over infinity squared. 1 plus 1 over infinity squared plus 2 over infinity cubed. Now we know for sure that 5 over a huge number goes to 0, 1 over a huge number goes to 0, 2 over a huge number goes to 0. And so we're simply left with, um, well actually I should have gotten rid of that at that point, but what we're actually left with is 1 minus 0 over 1 plus 0, and that's just equal to 1. So this is our, our C value. And since this is true, since we got, or actually, since the limit exists and equals 1, it follows that the two series either both converge or both diverge. So which one is it? Well, the series that we were comparing, we were comparing these guys. Now, both of these, either they either both converge or they both diverge. We know for sure that this diverges. This is the harmonic series. And since that's the case, and they both have to either converge or diverge. Since one of them diverges, the other one has to diverge. Okay, so our answer here is, our answer here is that our infinite sum of n squared minus 5 over n to the 3 plus n plus 2 must diverge. That's our answer here. All right, let's do another example here. Now, this is a sine function. So since we don't really have this rational format of numerator and denominator, we're just going to compare our original series to whatever our argument is, the highest power of the argument. And the highest power of the argument on top is 1. The highest power of the argument on bottom is n. That's just that's all we have, 1 over n. So the trick here is that we can compare sine of 1 over n to sum of just 1 over n, OK? And you know, so we know that this, this thing diverges. If we do the limit comparison test and we get a number, then we can conclude that this thing also diverges. OK, so let's do this. Um, so what we're going to do, the limit comparison test is that, hey, we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the series, the first series that we have, or the first 
sequence formula for the series divided by the other one. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is at this point, what I notice is that I have indeterminate form, right? So remember from L'Hopital's rule, if I plug in infinity here and infinity here, I get sine of 1 over infinity over 1 over infinity. Now, of course, on top, this thing goes to 0. So we have the sine of 0 is 0. 1 over infinity also goes to 0. And so since this is the case, we can use L'Hopital's rule. This is another strategy of how we can do this. So we can use L'Hopital's rule, which tells us that if we're in indeterminate form, we simply take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator and then plug in infinity. So let's do that. So we're going to take the derivative, maybe I should say dn instead of dx, of sine of 1 over n divided by, so this is L'Hopital's rule, L'Hope, okay, divided by the derivative of 1 over n. Okay. All right. So the derivative of the top, we have to use the chain rule, right? Because we have an inner function and an outer function. Our outer function is sine of x. Our inner function, or sine of n, our inner function is 1 over n. So the chain rule says, hey, take the derivative of the outer function. So the derivative of sine is just cosine leave what's on the inside, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of 1 over n. Now the derivative of 1 over n, this is just the derivative of n to the minus 1, and we can use the power rule here. So the power rule says I can move the exponent to the front and subtract 1. So this, the derivative of n to the negative 1, or 1 over n, is going to be negative 1 n to the negative 2. All right, so that's the derivative of the top. The derivative of 1 over n, we just said, was negative 1 times n to the negative 2. And now what's awesome here is these guys cancel out, and I'm left with the limit as n goes to infinity of cosine of 1 over n. plugging in infinity for n, this is going to, 1 over infinity goes to 0, and the cosine of 0 is the x value at 0 radians, which is 1. Okay, awesome. So since we got a limit that exists, since the limit exists and is 1, I mean, it doesn't matter, it could be any number, but since it's 1, it exists, and these two series either both converge or both diverge. So which one is it? Well, remember the, the thing that we compared to, right? We compared the original series sine of 1 over n to this guy, and we know for sure this guy diverges, right? That's the harmonic series. This guy diverges, and since they both have to diverge by the limit comparison test, this guy also must diverge. So, therefore, diverges. And that's our answer here. All right, let's do another example. So here's our series. We need to compare it to another one and use the limit comparison test. So again, my little trick here, like, a you know, to find a good 
series to compare to, you take the highest power term divided in the numerator divided by the highest power term in the denominator. So in this case, we are going to compare to the series n to the 3 over n to the 4, which reduces to our old friend 1 over n. Okay, so by the limit comparison test, I'm going to infinity, and here's my first sequence in terms of n divided by n to the 4 minus 2, divided by the second sequence that's representative of our series, which is 1 over n. All right, so let's clean it up. So we have this complex fraction here. And so we're going to just multiply by the reciprocal, which is n over 1. So we have to distribute this n on top to each of these four terms here. OK, so let's clean this up. So n times n to the 3 is n to the 4th minus 2 n to the 3 plus n squared plus n. And then we still have the same denominator. OK. All right, now I'm going to use my trick. You could do L'Hopital's rule if you wanted to, um, because you are going to get the indeterminate form infinity over infinity here. But for now, I'm just going to use the, the highest power trick. So when we have these infinite limits, we can divide top and bottom by the highest power term, which in this case is n to the 4. So we have this n to the 4 plus n over n to the 4 over n to the 4 over n to the 4 minus 2 over n to the 4. So we can clean this up. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity. This guy goes to 1. So we have 1 minus 2 over n plus 1 over n squared plus 1 over n cubed all over 1 minus 2 over n to the 4. Now once we plug infinity in here, once we plug infinity in this thing, we have 1 minus 2 over infinity plus 1 over infinity squared plus 1 over infinity cubed over 1 minus 2 over infinity to the fourth. Now we know from experience this goes to 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 0. And so we're just left with 1 over 1, which is 1. So again, the limit exists and is 1. So both series converge or both diverge. So which one is it? Well, again, the series that we were comparing to diverges, right? So we're comparing these two series. This one diverges for sure because it's the harmonic series again. So this one also must diverge. So they both diverge. OK. All right, let's do, let's do the limit comparison test here. So we're going to compare to the highest power on top and bottom. And here our variable is n. That's fine. So let's compare. Let's compare to this series. Because this is nice. This is a geometric series, right? This is the same thing as 2 over 3 to the n. And what we know about this guy is 
we know this converges. How do we know that? This is from a previous lecture because our, um, our radius of, or not our radius, I'm sorry, our ratio, our common ratio is going to be 2 over 3, and the absolute value of 2 over 3 is less than 1, and therefore this thing converges. So this is just a geometric series, and we're just using the test for convergence there. All right, so that's cool. So we know that that converges. So if we do this comparison test and we end up getting a limit, we know that this thing's going to have to converge too. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n over 3 to the n minus 1 divided by uh, 2 to the n over 3 to the n. And I'm writing it in the first way we saw it because that's going to let me cancel things out easily. You want to change your form depending on the situation. So let's clean this thing up. So I keep the top times the reciprocal of the bottom when I do that division. And here, what's cool is uh, these guys are going to cross cancel like that, divide each other out. And we're simply left with 3 to the n over 3 to the n minus 1. And of course, we're taking the limit here. I am being sloppy, and, you know, I'm sorry about that, but, but, time, is, uh, but time is of essence here. So here we go. Um, So what can we do at this point? What can we do? Well, the only thing we can really do, we're kind of done canceling here. Um, if we plug in infinity in for n, like to evaluate the limit, we end up getting indeterminate form, right? We get infinity over infinity, which tells us that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule says, hey, we can take the derivative of the top and the bottom and then evaluate the limit. So what's this, this we haven't really done a lot of practice with this semester, but we talked about it last semester what the derivative of a function like this looks like. And, and I'll just remind you right here, in case you forgot, if we take the derivative of a constant to a variable, that's going to equal ln of that constant uh, times that constant raised to the x. Okay, so this is just how we take the derivative of things like this. This is the form. Okay, so let's take the derivative of this since we have indeterminate form. So the derivative of this is just going to be the derivative of the top, and maybe I should have just maybe I should have just done the top and the bottom independently, but yeah, maybe I should do that to be a little bit more a little bit more careful here. So taking the derivative of the top and the bottom independently. So the derivative of the top, according to this reminder, is ln of 3 times 3 to the n. The derivative of the bottom, again, the derivative of this guy is just ln of 3, 3 to the n. And the derivative of this constant is 0. Okay, so we have the same derivatives for both top and bottom, which means that this guy... So we have the limit as, well, actually, what we end up getting is uh, ln of 3 times 3 to the n over ln of 3 times 3 to the n limit as n goes to infinity. Well, what's cool is that these are the same number, so this just goes to 1, and of course, 
the limit as n goes to infinity of 1, well, there's no n here, so that's just 1. That is just going to be 1. So the limit exists. It equals 1, so either these both converge or diverge. I already mentioned that this thing converges because it's geometric, so this thing has to converge. So this thing has to converge. And that's our answer here. Okay, so we've talked about several tests. We've uh, Last week we talked about the integral test. Um, we just talked about the comparison test um, and also the limit comparison test. So the next test that I'm going to introduce is called the ratio test. And this is how it goes. So let's say that we have um, a series uh, taking the sum of a sub n. And suppose we have the sequence of ratios a sub n plus 1. Basically, we're just putting in plus 1 in for our n. And uh, divided by the absolute value of a sub n. So if we have this situation, and let's say that we have a limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over the absolute value of a sub n equals L. These are the conditions for convergence or divergence. So if the limit is less than 1, then that sum does converge. If it's greater than 1 or if it's infinite, then it diverges. And if it's 1, we can't say anything about whether it converges or diverges. So let's get into some examples here. So it says show that the infinite sum of 1 over n factorial converges. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the ratio test to show this. So the ratio test, we need to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of 1 over um, a sub n plus 1. So basically, we're just plugging in n plus 1 in for our n. So we have 1 over n plus 1 factorial and divided by the absolute value of just regular a sub n, which is 1 over n factorial. All right. So, <clears throat> you know, once we take this out of the absolute value bars, both of these um, are going to be positive still. So we just have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 factorial over 1 over n factorial. All right. So we can write this a little bit neater, um, right? So we have a complex fraction here. So this is just going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, of the bottom fraction, so it's n factorial over 1. And so we're just taking the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. So we have to remind ourselves what, what it means, like what a factorial is, basically. So um, basically, you know, if we have a number, let's say 4 factorial, that just means, hey, start at 4, and then, um, or maybe another way to think about this is to start at 1 and multiply all the way until you get to 4. So 4 factorial is just 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. So that's one way to think about it. You know, 8 factorial is... 1 times 2 times 3 times dot 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 all the way times 8. Okay, so that's factorial what that means. So what we can do here is we can think of n as just being like a number and n plus 1 as again just being a number. I mean, you want to think of it like, okay, what if I had something like 7 factorial over 8 factorial? That would match the situation, right? n over n plus 1. Well, what's going to cancel out? What's going to cancel out? Um, well, we can we can see this um, we can see this in this example. You know, if you were to expand out seven times 
or 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to, um, well actually let's do this, why not? So we have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times dot 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 times 7 on top and on bottom, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times dot 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 times 8 on the bottom. So all that's going to be left, well, this whole thing is going to cancel with 1 times 2 all the way up to 7. So all we're going to be left with is 1 over 8, right? Or 1 over n plus 1, if we talk about it more generally, because we said this guy's n plus 1, and then the top was n. All right, so that's the idea here. Um, so let's go ahead and just expand this thing out in terms of n. So n factorial... We have the limit as n goes to infinity. n factorial, by definition, is going to be 1 times 2 times dot, 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 all the way until n. And then n plus 1 factorial is 1 times 2 times dot, 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 times n times n plus 1. And now we have some good stuff canceling out. All those guys cancel with all those guys. And we're simply left with the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1. And we definitely know what this guy is. When we plug in infinity in here, we have 1 over infinity plus 1. This is huge. 1 over huge is 0. Okay, so our answer here is 0. So since our limit equals 0, by the ratio test, that is bullet 1. The limit is less than 1. It's 0. And therefore, this thing is going to converge. By the ratio test. Whenever you see factorials, you should use you should try the ratio test. And it was one over n factorial. Okay. So it converges. All right, very nice. All right, let's see what this is. So it says, what does the ratio test tell us about the convergence of these two series? Well, we know for a fact that this thing diverges, but what does the ratio test have to say? Well, let's see. So what we want to do is, again, we want to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of 1 over n plus 1 divided by the absolute value of 1 over n. So this is just going to give us positive 1 over n plus 1 over 1 over n. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 over 1 over n, which simplifies down to, and maybe I'll just keep writing this vertically so we have more space for the other one. This is going to be limit as n goes to infinity of, well, complex fraction, keep the top fraction multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom to give me this. Okay. Um, so what is this telling me? Well, what I can do is my trick. I can divide top and bottom by the highest power, or I can use L'Hopital's rule, two options here. Um, I'm going to divide top and bottom by the highest power, which is n to the first. So I have n over n on top over n over n on bottom plus 1 over n. This goes to 1. This is 1. When we plug in infinity here, we have 1 over 1 plus 1 over infinity, which goes to 0. And so our limit here is 1. So let's go back to the ratio test, what the criteria is. Well, look, this third bullet applies because here our limit is 1. And therefore, the test doesn't tell us anything. That's unfortunate. But we know it diverges. So the point is that, yes, you can use the ratio test, but sometimes it's not going to give you any information that's useful. So therefore, the ratio test tells us nothing. OK. So the ratio test is useless. Let's look at this guy, all right? So again, we're going to apply the ratio test, limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value of this time. Again, we're just plugging in n plus 1 in for n. So we have n plus 1 minus 1 divided by absolute value of n plus 1. 
Okay. So let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to put the bottom one there too. So this, this whole thing was just a sub n plus one, but now I need to just plug in the original one on the bottom, which is negative one to the n minus one over n. Okay, so this is our setup for the ratio test. Now let's clean this thing up a little bit. Um, what I'm noticing is that the one and the minus one cancel and I'm just left with negative one to the n. So let's rewrite that as negative one to the n. Now, since I'm taking the absolute value, this, this negative one to the n, when I take the absolute value, is just gonna be one. And why is that? Because it doesn't matter for any n, positive or negative, the absolute value of negative one and the absolute value of positive one is gonna be one every single time. And, you know, we have, we have the same situation down here in the denominator. Um, negative one to some power is going to be what? Well, it's always gonna be one, no matter what n minus one is. So the way that we can simplify this is the limit as n goes to infinity of one, that's this thing, divided by absolute value of n plus one is simply n plus one, divided by, now this guy in the bottom, again, based on what I just said, the top, the absolute value of the top has gotta to be one. Negative one to any power, take the absolute value is one. So that's gonna be one over n. Okay, so that's how I can simplify that. And maybe I should just like create a barrier there. Simplifying this even more, I have limit as n goes to infinity of one over n plus one times n over one. So that's just n over n plus one. And we know what the limit of this is because we just did it. We just found that the limit is one. So the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus one is equal to one and therefore the ratio test tells us nothing. Pretty uh, anti-climatic here, but, but it's just, you know, some examples to show you that it doesn't work every time. The next test that we're gonna talk about is the alternating series test. So alternating series basically means that you have this coefficient of negative one to the n or the n minus one, and it's causing the signs to oscillate between terms, so like positive, negative, positive, negative, et cetera. So that's what that means. Um, and here's the, here's the test. If we have an alternating series of this form, then it's going to converge if, the, if these two conditions are true. The first condition is that a sub n plus 1 is less than a sub n, n positive, for all n. And the second condition is that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals 0. So let's go ahead and, um, and show that this alternating harmonic series converges. So our first two conditions, the first condition is that we have a sub n plus 1 between 0 and a sub n. And the second condition is that the limit as n goes to infinity of um, a sub n is going to equal zero. Okay, so what is a sub n and what is a sub n plus one? Well, if you notice the form here, a sub n is just the series without the negative one to the n or the negative one to the n minus one. So in this case, if we were to ignore this and just treat it like, like it was a coefficient in the front, you know, we could rewrite this too if we wanted to, just so you guys can see it a little better and it, to see that it matches up with the form that we have. Um, we have negative one to the n minus one times one over n. So this guy is our coefficient, right? And then the a sub n is our one over n, all right? So 
In this case, we have a sub n is equal to 1 over n, and a sub n plus 1 is equal to 1 over n plus 1. So let's check the first condition. Is a sub n plus 1 always between 0 and a sub n? Well, a sub n plus 1 is definitely always going to be positive because we are we're, we never start summing at a negative number or 0, and so this thing is always going to be positive. So that's cool. Um, is it always going to be strictly less than a sub n? Well, yeah, right? Because 1 over n plus 1 is always going to be smaller than 1 over n. So condition 1 definitely holds. Um, what about condition 2? Is it true that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to 0? Well, yeah, that's definitely true because the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, well, that's just 1 over infinity, which we know that was a terrible infinity. Let's try that again. 1 over infinity, which we know goes to 0. So condition 2 is met. And therefore, the series converges by the alternating series test. Both of these conditions are true. All right. OK, so this is, this is a lot. But sometimes, you know, you're just going to be given a series and you're going to be asked to see if it converges or diverges without saying, without it saying, you know, use the comparison test, use the ratio test, use this test, integral test, use that test. So the question is, how do we know which test to use? Um, this isn't always, this isn't always like cut and dry. Okay, so these are just some tips that you can use when you're doing your homework, um, when there are problems where it doesn't specify which test to use. So the first big thing that we know is we know about p-series. We know that if we have a series of the form 1 over n to the p, it's convergent if p is bigger than 1, and it's divergent if p is less than or equal to 1, such as 1 over n. All right, so that's the big thing. That's one of the big tests that we know. Um, the second thing that we know is we know about geometric series, and this was from a few lectures ago, but... If, if a series has the form a times r to the n minus 1, and, uh, and actually maybe, maybe we should change this to x just to be consistent. So this is going to be, let's, let's be consistent here, x to the x minus n minus 1 there. Let me change this over here just to be consistent with our notation from before. just to be consistent. Okay. So we talked about this. If we have geometric series and that common ratio x, if the absolute value of it is less than 1, it converges, but it diverges if it's greater than or equal to 1. So if your series is of this form, um, you should try doing the geometric test. Okay. So this third one, it says, if your, if your sequence relating to your series is a rational function or a function involving roots of polynomials, then a comparison test should be used to a, a p-series test. So what, what do I mean by this? Um, well, what I mean is rational functions have variables in the numerator and the denominator. So like, we use these p-series tests. Let's go back to the very beginning. Let's go back to the very beginning. Um, we use these comparison tests when we had rational functions. So like here is a rational function, right? We have a variable in the denominator here that's rational as well. Um, rational, rational, variable in numerator and denominator. Uh, but basically the criteria for a function to be rational is you have to have a variable in the denominator. Like you have to have, um, yeah, you have to have a variable in the denominator. So if that's the case, if they look similar to these that we have been doing, um, you know, if it kind of looks vaguely P-series-like, 
you should probably either use the limit comparison test or just the regular comparison test. Okay, so this is something that we talked about last week. This is called the divergence test. And remember what we, what we did to check for divergence. We took the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence that represents the series. And if that limit wasn't equal to zero, then we said that the series diverged. Um, so that's always a quick and easy test. And actually, I would, I would try that first with any of the rational functions. Um, and yeah, because it's easy to check. So that's another thing. Um, so it says, if the series is of this form, where we have this negative 1 to the n, or if we have negative 1 to the n minus 1 times a sub n, this is alternating series test form. So try that if you ever see this like oscillation stuff happening. Um, okay, next hint is uh, we talked a little bit about this series that involve factorials or other products, including a constant raised to the nth power, are often tested using the ratio test. Okay, so like with, you know, we did this. We did this um, right here. So we had a factorial here, and the ratio test is good for working with factorials. Um, so yeah, that is that. Um, we also talked last week about the integral test. So if your sequence is a function, like if it can be represented by a function that's easily integrated from 1 to infinity, then the integral test is usually a good test to go to. Now, the problems that you're going to encounter, I mean, there's multiple tests that will be valid. Like, this isn't, you know, a cut and dry rule. It's just helpful hints that could get you to the right solution. So let's do some practice on like identifying what tests to use. So the first thing I see here is that I have a rational function. And when I have a rational function, I want to first do the divergence test because it's quick and easy. So the divergence test says, hey, if I take the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing, and I don't get zero, it's going to diverge automatically. So that's the first thing you want to do if you have a rational function. And if that doesn't work, if you do get zero, you can't conclude anything about the convergence or the divergence, but you can do another test. But anyway, let's, let's see what happens here. So here we go. So we're going to try divergence test first. And that was that was something that we talked about last week, and that's that's number four here in this list. So we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared minus 1 over n squared plus n. I'm going to do my little trick here and divide top and bottom by the highest power, which is n squared. and then simplify. So this simplifies to 1, this simplifies to 1. Um, let's just write this again. Infinity of 1 minus 1 over n squared over 1 plus 1 over n. Okay, so we can see when we plug in infinity here, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, so we equal 1. So 1 is not equal to 0, so this thing diverges. This thing diverges. Okay, cool. So that was the divergence test number four. Let's look at number two. Again, I see a rational function because I see a variable in the denominator. And the first thing I want to do is try the divergence test. Again, so limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared plus n divide top and bottom by the highest power, which is n squared. Okay. 
So this goes to 1, this goes to 1 over n, so I have 1 over n squared over 1 plus 1 over n. Infinity, if I put infinity here, I get 0 on top, and then I get 1 on bottom, which equals 0. So this, this tells me I need to move on to another test, because remember, if I get 0 with this divergence test, that's number 4, property number 4, test for convergence, that's what we talked about last week. Um, if that's the case, I can't conclude whether it converges or diverges. So I need to use another test. And the test that you should use next, that you should move on to, is one of the comparison tests. Because the comparison tests um, are useful with rational functions. So let's move on to that. And I'm going to do some erasing here. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so now I'm going to try the comparison test. So this is, you know, what are we looking at here? We're looking at, this is kind of like number three. This is like a number three situation. We tried the divergence test, it doesn't work, so let's compare to another, um, another function. Okay, so what I'm going to do, since I can see that there's only... Um, variables in the denominator here. I'm going to just do the direct comparison test, the very first test we talked about in this lecture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare this to, remember what I did, the trick? I took the highest power on top, highest power on bottom. So I want to compare to this series. Now, what do I know? Well, I know that this one is the bigger series. This one's the bigger series out of this guy and this guy. This one's bigger. And I also know that it converges because it's a P series with P equals 2. This converges. And therefore, we can conclude since this is this thing is bigger than this and it converges, this thing also has to converge. All right. Okay, so that was that. Let's look at number three. Which test do you think we should use? What is this? What kind of vibes is this giving you? Is it giving you comparison test vibes or uh, geometric series or ratio tests? What should we do? And again, you know, again, there's multiple ways to do these problems. So if you're seeing something different than I am, but it still makes sense logically, then go for it. Um, what I'm noticing is this looks geometric. I can kind of manipulate this to look a little bit more, um, a little bit more geometric. So what do I mean? I mean that on the bottom, I notice 2 to the 3n is simply 8 to the n. So this is going to be negative 3 to the n plus 1 divided by 8 to the n. Um, yeah, so this is, this, is, this is geometric. It might not be obvious to see it at first, but let's go back to our notes and see what... So what do we have? We have constants raised to variables, right? Constants raised to variables, okay? So let's check the notes and see which of these tests would be m most appropriate. Um, well, I would say, I would say number six, because no, we don't have factorials, but we have constants raised to nth powers, right? Constant negative three raised to an nth power, constant of eight raised to an nth power. So I'm going to try the ratio test, and that is number six. Let's try it out. Let's try this ratio test out. So the ratio test says what? Let's go back to it to just remind ourselves of what this says. This says that we need to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of 
a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, and then that limit is going to tell us whether it converges or diverges. So let's do that here. So this is ratio test. Okay. All right. So now what I can do is I can simplify this a little bit, get rid of those absolute value bars, that negative three. Um, we don't really, we don't care about the negative when we take the absolute value. So here we're just going to have 3 to the n plus 2. Over 8 to the n plus 1. And again on the bottom, we don't care about whether the sign is positive or negative. So the absolute value is going to be 3 to the n plus 1 over 8 to the n. Okay, so let's see what this gives us. We have limit as n goes to infinity of 3 to the n plus 2 over 8 to the n plus 1 times 8 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1. Let's do some algebraic manipulation here. Now, remember what I do when I have the same base on top and bottom, I keep the base and subtract the exponents. n plus 2 minus n plus 1, being careful with those signs. And then for this 8, I do the same thing. I have the same base, so I keep the base and subtract the exponents. And then I can like clean this up a little bit, so let's do that. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 to the, this is all going to simplify to uh, 1, 3 to the 1. And with my 8, that's going to simplify down to 8 to the negative 1, which is simply 3 over 8. So that's my limit here. My limit, my limit in this case is less than 1. So by the ratio test, this thing is going to converge. All right, so by ratio test, converges. Let's do some more examples. Okay, so with number four, I have a similar situation. Um, I know it says K, but you can think of it as, as N, just that's the letter that, that we're choosing to use here. Um, and the first thing I notice is I have a constant to a power N, or K in this case. So I think the ratio test would be appropriate here again. So the ratio test would be appropriate here, again, because I have a constant raised to a power. So the ratio test, we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. Well, in this case, we're using k, so limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k plus 1 is just going to be I'm just plugging in k plus 1 into this thing. So k plus 1 plus 3 over 3 to the k plus 1. So that's that. Divided by the absolute value of k plus 3 over 3 to the k. 
All right, let's clean this up. So on top, um, this thing is going to reduce to absolute value is positive k plus 4 over 3 to the k plus 1. And then on bottom, we simply have k plus 3 over 3 to the k. All right, we have complex fractions, so multiplying by the reciprocal, we have k plus 4 over 3 to the k plus 1 times 3 to the k over k plus 3. And remember, we're still taking the limit as k goes to infinity. Um, okay, I can't really do anything with the, k, uh, like, oops, sorry guys, do that again. We can't do anything with this diagonal here, but I noticed that this diagonal, we have a base of 3, and so I can simplify that down a little bit by keeping the base and subtracting the exponents. So we have limit as k goes to infinity. So keep the base 3, and then we're going to subtract the exponent. So the first exponent minus the second exponent, all over k plus 3. All right, cleaning it up. Let's see, limit k goes to infinity of k plus 4. Now this thing is just going to turn into 3 to the minus 1 over k plus 3. And of course I'm running out of space here. So we have k plus 4 over k plus 3. And the 1 third can just come out in the front. We're taking the limit as k goes to infinity. And I can do my trick here, divide top and bottom by the highest power, or I can use L'Hopital's rule, which I'm going to do here just for time's sake. Uh, L'Hopital's rule says that this is going to give me 1. And so my limit is equal to 1 third, which is less than 1, which tells me this thing converges. OK, so let's go back up here. So by the ratio test, this thing converges. OK. All right, let's erase this and go on to the next one. Now, at first glance, what does this look like? Well, this negative 1 to the n minus 1 times 2 to the n over n squared. Well, that negative 1 to the n minus 1 is giving it away. It's an alternating series because of that. Um, let me just erase this. It's bugging me. Let's do that. OK. So this is an alternating series. Um, and so it says this is number 5. If the series is of this form, try the alternating series test. And yes, we, we are of that form. So here we have a sub n is equal to 2n over n squared, just ignoring the negative 1 to the n minus 1. And so a sub n plus 1 is going to give us 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared. OK, so remember our two conditions. The first condition was that um, we had to have a sub n plus 1 be greater than 0 but less than a sub n. And the second condition is that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n had to equal 0. OK, so the first condition that a sub n plus 1 is smaller than a sub n, is that true? Well, let's see. Um, let's see, is that true? Mm, let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, it's not really obvious to me at first, but since it's not 
since it's not obvious at first to me, um, let's, let's look at the second condition and see if we can, uh, if we can like say, okay, well, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero. If we can say that, then right off the bat, we can say this thing does not converge. Okay. So let's see if we can say that. Um, so let's look at condition two. And so we have the limit as n goes to infinity. A sub n is this guy. So we have two to the n over n squared. And L'Hopital's rule is, is going to apply here because we have an indeterminate form infinity over infinity when we plug in n. So L'Hopital's rule, remember we take the derivative of the top and the bottom. And the derivative of the top here is just going to be ln of 2 times 2 to the n. Derivative of the bottom is going to be 2n. And, um, and still we're of the form infinity over infinity. So we need to use L'Hopital's rule again. So this was the first time. If we use it a second time, well, um, here I'm just going to get uh, ln of 2 times another ln of 2 times 2 to the n. So taking the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom is 2. Um, if I plug in infinity here, I'm still getting infinity over two, okay? So what we can say here is that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is not gonna equal, is not gonna equal zero, right? Um, so since that is the case, by the alternating series test, this thing diverges because condition two is not met. So, last one on here. So what test do you think we should use? Well, I, ha I see a rational function without n's in the exponent. So when that happens, I always try the, the limit test first, the divergence test. So we want to see, does the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over 3n squared minus 2, does this equal 0? If it doesn't, we can automatically conclude that it's divergent. So let's do our trick here where we divide top and bottom by the highest power, which in our case is n squared. Okay, simplifying this. Get limit as n goes to infinity of uh, one over one over n plus one over n squared divided by three minus two over n squared. Now, if we plug in infinity, this goes to zero. This goes to zero. We have zero on top, three on bottom, and so this test is inconclusive. We can't conclude here that it's convergent or divergent. We have to use another test. Um, okay, so what other test are we going to use? Well, then we move on to the comparison test. And here I'm going to use the limit comparison test because um, because the, you know the, the numerator and the denominator are a bit more involved where like, for instance, number Number one, we had a really simple numerator. We didn't have a variable in it. So that's why I use the regular comparison test here. But here I'm going to try the limit comparison test because it, I don't like the n in the numerator, basically. So I'm going to use the limit comparison test. And again, I'm, I'm looking at 
uh, I'm looking at number three here. So we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n. Now b sub n in this case, remember what we do with these comparison tests, we take the highest power on top and on bottom. And so this thing is just going to be 1 over 3n. So we have this. <clears throat> so simplifying this out, I have limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 times 3n, just multiplying by the reciprocal there, over 3n squared minus 2. So this becomes 3n squared plus 3n over 3n squared minus 2. At this point, since I'm taking the limit as n goes to infinity, I'm going to divide top and bottom by the highest power, and I'm going to clear some of this so I make room. So I have 3n squared n goes to infinity, 3n squared over 3n squared. And actually, I can just divide by n squared. It doesn't have to be 3n squared. So we do this. OK. All right, so when we take the limit here, so first of all, these go away, these go away. And I'm simply left with, um, I'm simply, I'm simply left with, I'm simply left with 3 over 3, which equals 1. Okay, so what does this tell me? So let's go back to the limit comparison test. <clears throat> So the limit comparison test, remember, tells me that if the limit does indeed exist and it is greater than zero, then they either both converge or both diverge. Now, what were we comparing the original series to? Well, let's go back. We were comparing it to this guy. So we know that this guy diverges because it's just the harmonic series multiplied by a third, and therefore, our original series diverges by the limit test. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful in, um, in showing you, you know, how these different tests work and when to use which tests and so forth. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.